And welcome to my playhouse and today I have a problem I have a disc that is dead up here at my ice gossy sand and we're gonna be replacing that that's fairly easy I've done that before I have a previous video but as you can see in the this is actually my hot spare kind of it's not in use I'm just using it spare parts more or less I haven't used it very much for spare parts nothing has broken except the discs they keep failing so right now there is a lot of empty slots in here we're gonna exchange number nine up here but first let's see what this ice gossy sand thing really is these are my sand boxes and there are two of them the top ones up here is 14 discs each 750 gigabytes the bottom one is exactly the same box but each disc is two terabytes so up here there is 14 times 750 and down here there is 14 times two terabytes these are configured in RAID 6 so that means that two of the discs are lost in security another two discs are lost because they are hot spares so there are actually this is more or less 10 times 750 which gives it 7.5 terabytes and down here is 10 times 2 terabytes which is about 20 terabytes you always lose a little bit because the discs doesn't really give you 2 terabytes or 750 I think up here it's more like just about 700 gigabytes per disc and down here I think it's 1800 something per disc let's go to the back see what's back there here is the back of the devices uh, and there is three of those one up there one there and one there each of them is just pointing at the bottom one they each have two power supplies so they have redundant power they have redundant fan blowers one in each side here and they have redundant controllers so there is two ice gushy controllers in this SATA uh, 2 control model is this one called and there are three net network ports each uh, gigabit and there is also the option of putting in fiber optic ports gigabits instead kind of hard to see that that will go in the way that's kind of how it looks on the back I am mostly just using one controller in each of them just with a, with a couple of LAN interfaces and they go over into the switch let's just see the switch down here this one is a uh, actually running out of ports in that one and it's already 48 ports so that's the back of it let's go change the disc so up here is number nine this is just about is that it that one number nine and that has failed in some way um, when they're red they're usually bad so what I do I take them out just take the bad one out place it down place it down here you want to go in there just to mark it bad and my hot spares I have four hot spares left so I'm just gonna take the next one which is a Seagate Bakure ES 750 750 gigabytes and we're gonna pop that in there and it should start to blink check that disc if this is a good or a bad disc it could be a bad disc now it's checking it at least checking out if it's uh, good or bad if the red light diode disappear and it is checking the disc so, so far so good well I have a lot of bad discs now these three are bad and I have have some more so we're gonna go and um, have a look at those and figure out which of them is really bad and which is just you know, sometimes it just doesn't like the discs and it spits them out and well then they will be on the shelf a little bit and then they'll be good again but I'll just bring these three 
Yeah, this is actually the amount of discs that I have right now that are kind of bad. There is nine discs and usually I used to take out all the discs of these bays. But I have a new method that I want to test out. I have like a USB 3 to SATA converter thing. And I found that that plugs in there really nicely, like that. And I just wanted to see if that can go into my computer and work on some of the disk, see what happens. So this is what I'm gonna try. I'm just gonna plug it in right there. Uh, something, unknown disks. I'm not hearing it spinning up. Let's see what happens if we try to initialize this disk. Initialize disk. And yes. Uh, device is not ready. So apparently my USB port is not able to power that. Mm. Well, that was too easy, but then, then we have the other thing. But that means that I'll have to take the disks out of the case to put them in here because they don't go in there with the case. So the first disk is ready to come in. Sounds better. Let's see what the computer finds. Nothing yet. Wonder if I've plugged this in. I'll just check the USB connection. There is the reason. There we are. There we have a disk. Unallocatable. I'm just going to initialize it. Uh, we're just going to give it a simple format and see what happens. Okay, it formatted that. It doesn't sound very good, but oh, I think it's still okay. That doesn't really seem that bad. I think we'll turn that off again, put it back in the bay and try it again the next time some disk fails. Let's see what the system out there says. Well, this disk is dodgy. It's making a lot of noises, even though I'm not really doing anything on it. I just ran a test, even though it does not say that it found anything. It, it says that my device was successfully scanned, no problems were found. Well, I don't trust it that much, but well, it's not completely dead. I will keep this one as well. This one is kind of weird. Can you hear that noise? I have marked it at some point with a star. That, that one was suspicious. And over here at the computer, if we watch just here, it says that the disk is a read-only disk, which, um, which is weird because, yeah, it shouldn't be a read-only disk. I do think that I'm gonna I'm gonna give up on this disc and just trash it. Well, here is the progress so far. These eight discs up here has been checked and they're pretty much okay. This disc over here is the one that is weird. And got, it got right protected. I think I was doing a check disc and it was failing that and when I Stopped it, it, it right protected itself, probably part of the check disk. And, well, it was failing the check disk anyway. I had Then I have this one bay that is now available and I had two other empty bays and I just happened to have three more disks. Actually I have even one more, but now I will have the full amount of disks available if anything else breaks down. They occasionally get bad on that iSCSI device. Okay. Here I am on a remote server, or what I call a jump server, and this is what the Equilogic interface looks like. The box itself is an Equilogic PS400E. Let's just see the members down here. This is what it looks like. There is 14 disks here, and if we go into disks, we will see that they're all pretty much doing good. It's not showing the speed here, which is kind of odd. 
Uh, well, it's not a big deal. And here, all the disks are about 700 gigabytes. There are really 750, but as I said, they, they show a little bit less. And all is great right now. And uh, number nine that I just put in is also doing really fine. So that's good. This is a little Java application. Uh, it's really also just available from a website. Oh, we can just see. This is about 6.5 terabytes of data. And I have the one with all the big disks. This one you can just members. And this one has about 17.7 .7 terabytes of data. And it has a problem. Uh, the other one has a problem too. I was just looking at that. It has a... Where did I look at that? I looked at it here. On this one we have... I have a lot of errors on the network cards. There is like 579,655 package errors on that network card and 422 on that network card. I'm not sure what's going on there. It's kind of weird. If anyone knows why it's doing that, do tell me. I have no idea. It has been working great for years, even though it has been doing weird stuff. And I'm using about half of it. 3.5 terabytes I'm using and there is about 3 terabytes available. So that's all good. And the web interface looks, it's very similar. It's, I think it's the same Java thing that's just opened in a web interface. And let's see the error down here. Warning almost amount of used. Okay, I'm actually running into some to a limitation here. That's all good. But I have another problem on this box. And uh, it's the power supply. Power supply, the status is good, but it has a failed fan. So one of the fans in that power supply has stopped. So I think I might just go have a look at that too, to get that up and run. Take one of the power supplies from the, the spare and put it in bay number zero, if I can find that one. And then that should be good again. But yeah, this is what it looks like. You make your disk groups in here. I have a, some volumes here. Uh, this is the one that is well, it's running dry of space, it, even though it's just it's two terabytes available, but it's has run into the limit and giving out a warning. Yeah, not really that interesting. It would be much more interesting the day that I'm actually gonna redo this setup. So I'll go exchange the power supplies and see if that helps. A wild guess would be that this is power supply number zero and that would be power supply number one. Either way, I'm just gonna change this one. So I'm gonna power that one off. Remove the clock and take that out. Put that on the floor. I cheated and loosened up the, the screws already. So down here, the next one. And I just I blew into the fans of this one just to make sure that they were both turning around correctly and they were. So power on there. Power that one on. Cool. So from two errors, we're now down to one error. And um, well, I have to admit, I made a stupid mistake right now. I changed the wrong power supply. Uh, you didn't see this, but, and I didn't really have to admit this, but well, it was actually the power supply on the, on the lower iSCSI array that I had to change. Power supply zero of that, but I changed the top one and that was not failing at all. I corrected that and I've been down using the air compressor and blowing out all the dust from that and I put that one into the number two with the big disks. 
Um, and this is okay right now. I could probably go in here and expand that disk. Um, or I could just I could just move this, tell it that it doesn't have to complain at 80%, but complain at 95%, but well, never mind. Well, now we have all the disks that are good again. I have a power supply that is maybe, maybe not bad, but really it's just, uh, it's these tiny computer fans. They're like a couple of dollars each if really one of them is broken. I might just take this apart and go on um, Amazon or somewhere else and just order 10 of those. Maybe not 10, maybe just 2 or 3 or 4. But, well, they should not be very expensive. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will do another video when, at some, when I at some point upgrade um, this one up here. is At some point I'm gonna change that out to 2 terabyte disks. Not, not really because I need the space. You could see I have a lot of space on it. I'm not using a lot of it anyway, but the disks use the same amount of power, so I might as well have the maximum amount of space available for me. Right now I'm just using all these old 750 gigabytes because I have them. At some point I won't have enough anymore. When the next one becomes bad and I go through all the, all the disks here and maybe Maybe they won't be working as good as I'm hoping. Maybe then I'll start putting in two terabytes disk instead. As far as I know, the maximum size this Dell Ecolatic PS100 to 400 E's can take is two terabytes disks. If anyone knows that I'm wrong, by any means write it down in the comments. I am very interested. So. Um, Thank you for watching my videos, do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. Join me over at Google Plus where I post pictures of what I'm up to, so you can comment in on it before the video gets out. So, and have a nice day. Bye bye.